Hi, my name is Chris Melnick, and I'm a realtor in Halifax, Nova Scotia. I'll often say that homes built in the 1980s and newer are what you should be focusing on when buying a home. In Halifax, it's just better value. Most people don't really know the difference and pay more than they should for older homes. I touched on this in other videos, but I'll give a more complete overview in this video. For those who don't know, I've personally worked during renovations for a number of years on homes up to 100 years old and have completely renovated a 1920s home, including the entire electrical system, plumbing system, framing and addition, and nearly everything else you can think of, all permitted and inspected. So I'm very familiar with current building code. You can see more in my About Me video. My preference for 1980s and newer homes is due to the layouts, standards, materials, and different attitudes over time. There was a big shift in design and construction from the 1970s to the 1980s. For the purpose of this video, I'll call homes built prior to 1980 as older and 1980 and onwards to be newer. This is just to make it quicker to say. 1980 is an approximation. There are plenty of exceptions on either side, but 1980 is a good arbitrary rule of thumb. Many older homes have been retrofitted with newer components, which is great, but this video mostly focuses on what the home originally came with. And you can't just change everything. First, design and layout. Older homes typically had smaller bedrooms, a smaller kitchen, fewer bathrooms, lower ceilings, and depending on how old, they may have had multiple sitting rooms too, which are not very desirable currently. They were also more likely to have clipped room corners upstairs, which was caused by 45 degree roofs, which were popular at the time. This often cuts down on headroom in the upstairs bedrooms. Older homes in general are also much more likely to have steeper roofs, which makes it more challenging and expensive to replace the shingles or do any other work on the roof. Newer homes typically had larger rooms, a larger kitchen with room for a dishwasher, a more open concept, more bathrooms, and higher ceilings. Older homes were also much more likely to have a minimal roof overhang, but also didn't do as good of a job as shielding the siding from the rain. This can cause damage to the lower siding or allow more water near the foundation. Next, materials. We'll start at electrical. In newer homes, they began using Romex wiring, which is plastic coated wiring that's very similar to what's used today. In older homes, they could have used knob and tube, aluminum wiring, and cloth insulated wiring. It's generally recommended to replace all of those with a modern plastic coated wiring. In newer homes, they had already started using breakers on the main electrical panel, whereas in older homes, they used fuses. Fuses literally break if they're ever tripped and must be replaced. Breakers can simply be reset. Many insurance companies insist that fuse panels be replaced with breaker panels. Next, plumbing. Older homes typically used copper for water supply lines, which is good, but at over 40 years old, they approach their useful lifespan and can be prone to leaking. Newer homes could be copper, poly-B, Kitec, or PEX. You want to be very careful around poly-B and Kitec. See my video on red flags. But PEX and copper under 40 years old in this climate are good options. Older homes typically had cast iron drain pipes, which themselves are actually very good. A downside is that they're much thicker, and because of that, they often weren't able to hide them in walls. So they were visible. Newer homes, on the other hand, use ABS for drains, which is what we currently use. These are much thinner, which means even a 3-inch drain, which is typically the largest you would have in a home, can be hidden within a standard non-structural 2x4 wall. ABS is very resilient and very easy to add to in case you're planning on any renovations. The wood they used in older homes is also much more variable. Yes, it is often older growth, so it's stronger, and sometimes framing lumber was hardwood, but depending on how old can be in consistent sizes, or can have shrunk due to humidity, or develop creep over time. In my old home, I had a rough 2x6 floor joists. Some measured 2 inches by 6 inches, and some measured 2.5 inches by 6.5 inches. These could be right next to each other. This made it very challenging to install flooring above and drywall in the ceiling below. 
For interior finishing prior to about 1960, they used lath and plaster. This can crack and buckle over time, which is challenging to repair properly. It's also very messy and heavy to remove. Many people who want clean looking walls just put 3 8 inch drywall over top. Homes built after 1960 used some form of drywall, and homes built in the 1980s or newer used drywall extremely similar to today. Half inch 1980s drywall is generally denser than today's, which makes it marginally better for sound deadening. Windows in older homes are also a mixed bag, but most of them have been retrofitted with newer ones. That said, you still do occasionally see single pane windows held in with mastic or wood trim. This doesn't have very good insulation properties. Newer homes typically came with some form of double-paned windows, either thermopane units like we have today, or what's effectively two single-pane units put together to make a double-pane window, which has similar insulation properties to thermopanes and can never fog up. Exterior doors in older homes are generally wood, which require periodic repainting, whereas it was common for newer homes to feature aluminum-clad entry doors, which still look good today. Older homes, especially those built prior to 1970, had nearly all wood exteriors. This included the siding, trim around the windows, fascia, and soffits. All of this has to be periodically repainted and caulked to prevent water intrusion. Oftentimes, this isn't done, which leads to peeling paint and rot. Newer homes typically came with vinyl siding, vinyl or aluminum soffits, metal fascia, and no separate window trim. This is effectively maintenance-free except for periodic cleaning. Finally, a big one is asbestos. This was used prior to the 1980s and was found in a lot of parts of a home. You can generally avoid this by going for a newer home. See more in my video on red flags. Asbestos is a carcinogenic. It causes cancer. Next, standards. This includes changes to building codes and best practices. For plumbing, newer homes have very similar standards to today. For the most part, the drains are the same sizes and the venting is the same. In older homes, the sizes can differ and they may not have any venting at all. This can affect how well your water drains. They may also have S-traps or whole house P-traps, which must be replaced. S-traps can create a siphoning effect that suck all the water out of a trap, enabling sewer gases to come up through the drain. And whole house P-traps don't allow the main city sewers to vent through each home's main stack. For electrical, older homes typically have fewer circuits. Some homes built in the 1950s only had one receptacle per bedroom because they didn't have the need for more. Because of this, some older homes only had 12 circuits or so for the entire home. But by the 1980s, people really liked using electricity, and homes generally came with just as many circuits and receptacles as they do today. It was also more common for newer homes to have wired smoke alarms and coaxial run throughout the home for cable and internet. For framing standards, 1980s homes are nearly identical to today. It was very common for exterior walls to be built with 2x6s, floor joists to be 2x10s and 2x12s, and trusses to be used for roof assemblies. This allows for the same amount of insulation in the walls as today, and the ability to put more blown-in insulation in the attic if you choose to. Now, these dimensions of lumber also allow you to more easily run ducting and plumbing components if you need to later. This can help you avoid ugly bulkheads and renovations. In newer homes, hallways are at least three feet wide, and the slope or steepness of stairs and the guardrail height is what we have today. The framing spacing and fastening schedules are nearly identical too. On older homes, it's a complete mixed bag, but you generally see 2x4 exterior walls and 2x4 or 2x6 stick-framed roofs that can accommodate much less insulation. You also see narrower hallways, steeper stairs, and shorter guardrails. Also in homes prior to about 1960, they didn't have plywood, so instead they would use 1x4s or 1x6s, often tongue and groove. For floors, they would run these diagonally, so they didn't have to pay attention to ensure that the joists were exactly 16 inches apart. Likewise, if they used lath and plaster, the studs didn't need to be exactly 16 inches apart, which is a current building standard for spacing. What that means is that if you plan to renovate, you may have a challenging time altering modern 4x8 sheets of plywood and drywall for unevenly spaced joists and studs. Sometimes 
these, they're perfect though. Prior to about 1970, it wasn't common to use vapor barriers in construction. This helps control moisture and drafts. The vapor barrier in newer homes is nearly identical to those used today, although today they focus even more on making sure the vapor barrier is sealed well. Bathroom fans were also commonly used starting in the 1980s. These vent water vapor from bathrooms outside to avoid any moisture issues. Next, attitudes over time and age. We have the phenomenon of people just not wanting to fix older homes or fix them properly. This is completely subjective and varies greatly, but here's an example of what I mean by this concept. Have you ever met somebody who bought a car for $1,000? Oftentimes it works until something breaks, but when something needs work, like the tires need to be replaced, and the cost of good tires is $700, that person says, why would I spend $700 on just the tires? I bought the whole car for a thousand bucks. And then they proceed to drive on unsafe tires or, ins or install poor quality, cheaper parts. At the end of the day, tires are a major safety component and it doesn't matter if the car's worth a thousand dollars or $80,000, but some people just see what something is worth and won't spend the money that it needs. I found this can be very true for older homes in Halifax. Even in 2005, a home built in 1950 was already 55 years old and not worth a lot of money. So oftentimes problems were neglected, which caused more problems, or they were fixed cheaply. In recent times, as home prices have increased and people are looking to dress up their homes for resale, these things are all just covered up. They paint the walls off white, install subway tiles, and just put up plenty of decor with script font. I found this occurs more often in lower end homes. Higher end homes were often always expensive. That said, there are many homes that were once considered lower end, but are now considered to be in trendy, well-located, expensive neighborhoods, so be careful. Finally, we just have age. Even some good materials and building practices just degrade over time. Concrete foundations have been used even in the 1930s, but over time could start deteriorating. Older ones often have very little or no exterior waterproofing. These are often parged over or painted. But the aging process has taken its toll underneath. Likewise, as the home ages and settles, the wood framing itself can change. Walls and floors can become bowed and shift. If you've ever worked on an older home, you'll know the feeling when none of the walls are perfectly vertical, the floors develop the slant that goes down a half inch on one side of the room. These shifts in materials like wood degrading and contracting can create entry points for mice and rats to get inside the walls and home. This is something of an open secret for older homes on the peninsula, Fairview, in downtown Dartmouth. Since this is to do with the wood frame, which is the most difficult part of a home to replace, you just have to deal with it. For renovations, this often involves using a lot of shims or just doing your best to balance the wonkiness. What this means is that renovations are more difficult, expensive, and you'll never get a perfect result. In conclusion, pay attention to the age of a home when looking. As a rule of thumb, look for a 1980s and newer home. There are plenty of exceptions, like higher-end homes in the South End that have had a lot of money spent on redoing nearly everything, but those are outliers. The cost to get an older home up to modern standards often exceeds the cost to build a new home, and then you would still be left with an old layout and design. It's often the case where a home built in the 1960s sells for the same price as one built in the 1980s if they look identical on the outside, because people just don't know any better. On the positive note, if you do know what to look for, you can get a great deal. There's nothing wrong with wanting a character home that smells like an old church, but just know what you're paying for. As always, I hope you've got some value out of this video. My contact information is in the description. Goodbye.